Good morning. Hey, let me start off this morning by saying happy Mother's Day to all of you wonderful mothers out there. Hope you have already been blessed today and just our prayers that you just continue blessed uh, while you're here this morning. Out in the cafe area, our hospitality team has made some incredible coffee. Some There's some bagels, donuts out there. Feel free to grab yourself something and come on in here and we're going to have a, you're going to listen to a great band and we're going to have a treat today with a panel of, of mothers and and some great discussion today. So hope that you are uh, blessed uh, this morning. A couple of announcements to let you uh, um, aware of is uh, on May the 22nd, uh, we have graduation recognition. And so if you are graduating high school or above, we want to recognize you and honor you. And that'll be happening on May 22nd, both services. Uh, make sure you let us know who you are. And uh, you can write that on your connection card and make sure we get that. And then also on June the 12th, we're having uh, a child recognition or baby dedication morning. And again, if you have a, a child that you want to dedicate, a baby you want to dedicate uh, that morning, again, we'll be doing that both services. Make sure you write that on the connection card that you want to participate in that, and we'll make sure and get that done. Go ahead and stand to your feet if you would, and take a moment to greet someone around you.
transcending the plot of us. All praise be to you, my King. All praise be to you. Holy crown of heaven. God, we praise your name this morning. We honor you with our voices, God. We honor you with just our presence here, declaring your name, your fame, God, lifting you high. God, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for our mothers, for what they mean to each of us. God, we thank you for uh, the design that you uh, set up for our families. God, the value there is 
in that, Lord, and the love uh, that can be uh, unmatched at times by our mothers, God. We just thank you for that. We thank you for setting uh, setting that picture up for us so, so beautifully in our lives, God. Uh, so we ask, Lord, that uh, you would um, bless the mothers here today, that you would um, speak into them during this time, God, that they would come away encouraged, uh, even a bit challenged, Lord, uh, and to know that they can find hope and love in you, and to know that, uh, God, you, um, your heart is after them, God. We just thank you for all you do and ask that you would speak to us now. It's in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Okay, you can go ahead and be seated, and I just say to you, happy Mother's Day, uh, moms and uh, dads and uh, family, kids. Uh, I'm, I'm, I love Mother's Day. I love Mother's Day, and so... Uh, glad that you've chosen to worship with us and be a part of this experience. Uh, one of the things we do is we just, last couple of years, we've kind of made it a tradition where we just bring bring some women up, some mothers up, and just let them share a, from their perspective. Uh, let them share their stories about being a mom. And uh, so without any further ado, I just invite you to uh, welcome and, and give let, let these folks, let these ladies know how much you appreciate them. Uh, we have Ashley Harris and and Esther Munch and Carol Loya and uh, Michelle Mailer uh, coming up. So, got, ladies, just join. I almost said guys. Ladies, join us up here right now. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Yep, that's all right. And, uh, oh, I was wondering. I was like, there's two more. There's two. I was over here. I'm thinking, where's the other two at? You guys were sneaking up on me. Uh, I shared before that uh, some of you might go, who's this Michelle Mailer? It's for Brandon. And for the record, you know, I know you guys for the last two years have been Mahler officially since no one was, you know, would clue me in on how to actually pronounce your name. So it's Mailer. And uh, we're so happy that you you guys are here today. And, and um talking, willing to tell your stories. It's kind of a nerve-wracking thing, isn't it, at times? And, and also this hour, we have Kleenex up here, so we're prepared, we're ready to go. Uh, one of the things that recognizes is just preparing for this time and thinking about this talk uh, is that there is a journey, a path, that every mother has to take to, to come to motherhood, you know? Uh, I remember as a kid, Popeye, very specifically, the cartoon Popeye, in which the stork would come deliver the baby at at the doorpost, right? And so I thought that motherhood and fatherhood was just literally one day, uh, doorbell rings and you open up and there's a baby, you know? And I think I was about 27 or 28 before I found out the truth on that or figured that one out, that that was not the case. So, so the reality is there's some months leading up to motherhood. There's some journeys. There's some, some steps uh, that, that people take to get to that point. And what I just thought about was just, just share with these folks, uh, ladies, just kind of what was your journey approaching motherhood? You know, what, 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 where were you at? What were the thoughts you were having? Uh, you know, what were maybe some of the barriers or, or some of the things you had to deal with and focus on to get to a point to be ready to have a child? Uh, if even that's a fair st statement, to be, are you ever ready to have a child? <laughs> Probably not. Carol's said like, no. No, uh, and she would know. And she would know of all of us here. So, so talk talk to me about what what were some of the thoughts going on? What were things going on in your life? Uh, well, I went first last hour, so I'll go first. Again. Okay, fair enough. Um, fair enough. I am a brand new mom of twins, and um, we have one boy and one girl. I don't know if you guys have seen them in church recently, but we've just now come back um, for the past few weeks. Um, our journey to parenthood has been kind of a um, a painful one, a bit of a struggle. Um, it was this time last year, literally in Mother's Day service, um, that I was on the other end of, of our struggle where um, I was just praying and hoping that God would let me be a mom. Um, Justin and I tried for about four years um, to start a family on our own, and we were not able to. Um, we looked at different uh, different ways of being parents. We looked at adoption. We looked at all sorts of stuff. Um, I'm actually adopted myself, so um, I've always wanted to be a mom, and like, really a mom, and just to be able to go through pregnancy and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's something that I wanted, and we learned through our struggle that we were not going to be able to have children on our own without a lot of help. 
Um, so this time last year, I was getting ready to start um, the process of having a doctor help us start family and all. If you know anything about that, um, there's lots of medicine, lots of uh, money, all that kind of stuff that goes into it. So lots of prayers were put up on that day. Um, and God blessed us and blessed our journey. And we, we now have two beautiful babies. They're not here now. They just went home with Dad. Um, but that's kind of, kind of our journey. Yeah, that's an interesting thought because obviously – when you have kids, you start thinking about the college college funds and, okay, how are we going to afford vac family vacations, all this. But for you guys, right out of the gate, it's, hey, we've got to put some significant capital up to go through just the medical procedures and everything. So talk about reprioritizing, right? Well, and really, with, with us, um, we just built a house in 2013. Um, that was kind of our, we, we had planned for that. We had saved for that. And we were still, you know, trying to start a family at that time, but didn't realize what was going to happen. Yeah. And I know if, if you want to talk to me about um, all that went into our journey, I'm happy to share all the details. But we prayed and prayed about it. Um, and really financially, this was the smartest way that we could find for our family to, to yeah. start one. Because, I mean insurance doesn't pay for the tests to be done yeah um insurance doesn't pay for anything so we had i mean we we took out a loan basically and just kind of had to make that decision and for our family if you know my husband at all um <laughs> he's not a gambler and um to put down a significant chunk of change for a baby was a big deal yeah um so yeah that's and and ashley said something that i want to <laughs> lean into and I know all four of these ladies well, and, and if, if any one of these people, uh, you lean into their story and you're like, man, that's where I'm at, or that's what I'm struggling with, I guarantee you that the, uh, they have permission and they, they, uh, they want you to connect with them. Connect with them after service, connect with them next week, and they can talk more and lean into you. Uh, so by all means, you have that permission to do follow-up afterwards. So someone else, talk, talk to me. Talk to well, me, Michelle. There, I think. Uh, it, wait, is it working? Well, okay. Yeah, it's working. I can hear myself. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, also, yeah, on the other side, I'd, like, I think we would love to hear more yeah. people's stories, too. Um, yeah, Brandon and I, have. Uh, we're going to be married for six years this July, and when we got married, um, you know, the topic of kids was like, oh, down the road. Um, uh, and I think uh, a lot of that was because of um, the, we saw the responsibility that it takes to be a parent, and I didn't want that. Yeah, I didn't see, like, how am I going to be able, you know, like, I've had to learn how to love a husband and not, like, make marriage about me. How am I not going to, like, do the same thing to a child? Yeah. Um, yeah, and so um, last May, actually, it was um, a few days ago that we, were, we found out that um, we were going to be entering into parenthood. And um, I remember finding out there was the initial fears, like, oh, my goodness, I said first hour, like, uh, or first service that um, I'd had sushi and other things that had happened that month that I was like, oh no, like <laughs> I've already messed it up, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, it was really sweet um, to experience how God had been freeing um, me and my husband um, of a lot of the fears that we had in yeah. in to parenthood, and there was um, some peace. And um, uh, on the other side, like as I started that journey, I also. Um, quickly saw there was going to be a, still a struggle like um we had we uh, the next week had started flying out to east asia last summer and i had um actually went through the first trimester alongside my friend and co-worker who was also just found out she was pregnant and um uh, kind of as ashley had did like not every uh, uh journey into motherhood is smooth and so she was having like a high risk pregnancy while I was having a very like um, easy pregnancy, like in terms of, you know, not really getting sick or other things. So it's just interesting to go through this journey um, with someone experiencing it in a completely different way um, and how, yeah, God continued to open both of our eyes and how his love is like, not like, um, uh, he didn't favor me because I was, you know, having easy pregnancy, but just going through that journey was something that was very uh, unlike anything else I've yeah. gone through. Yeah. Um, 
I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's something you and Carol have in common there. That you you know you know what it's like to be pregnant while in a foreign country, right? Mm -hmm. Carol, what about you? I mean, you had your first child, mm -hmm. Costa Rica. I mean, but that journey beforehand, what did you deal with? What did you go through? What 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 did you have to walk through? Well, I remember. Well, Max and I had been married about. Uh, <coughs> seven, six, six years before, seven and a half years before Caleb was born, I remember laying on the floor of my, my bedroom at my parents' home and just crying out to God for, for a child because the doctor said, well, I doubt of it, you will ever have any children. And um, so when we went to the mission field, uh, Caleb was born there and I, I was just overwhelmed with God's yeah. answer to prayer, yeah. how he, he answered that prayer after after so long, and I remember sitting in the chairs, just like some of you might be without a child, and sitting by my own mother, and n hoping, like Ashley said, and and the the feeling that we'd be on uh, raising our support, and family people would say, well, you're not really you know missionaries because you don't have children. And, oh my! And so we we. I didn't, didn't know that was a, a I didn't know that was a caveat to being a missionary was you oh, had to have children. Most definitely. So so all of those things and and how uh, God answered prayers in spite of the what the doctors say and and what the doctors had uh, foretold yeah. for us. Yeah. And now we have have seven from the age twenty seven to thirteen. Uh -huh. So God has definitely God answered, answered prayer. our prayers. <laughs> <laughs> Esther, what about you? My story is a little different, so I'm going to preface it with the fact that I deeply love my daughter uh, more than about anything. Um, and I also want to, to mention that I am very sympathetic to people that have struggled to have children or people that you know have lost a child. Um, however, I was not the person that was excited um, to be pregnant. I was surprised. I was caught off guard. I worked 60 hours a week. I had multiple computer screens and traded stocks and bonds all day, and that was my priority. I had been married for 10 years to my middle school sweetheart, um, which those of you that know him, I'm a saint. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, um, you know, Aaron and I, uh, we didn't have our priorities straight. We, we were just not in a good spot, and so... Um, I initially was, was heartbroken. I'd never changed a diaper. I'd never worked with kids. I did not have a clue what, what I was supposed to do. How was I going to be a mom? And so my journey started out that way and then got even rougher when um, about six months pregnant, I had uh, some severe blood pressure issues and was put on bed rest in the hospital. My body was not a good home for my little Frances Lee. And um, so she came about two months early and we spent time in the NICU. We started out pretty rough and I, I think there was a plan in that. And now I just, I, I looked at her this morning. She came downstairs and got in bed. She tries to be quiet um, and she's four and a half. And if you know my daughter, she's not quiet. Um, so she quietly crawled in bed, and this never happens. She didn't say anything about watching Sheriff Callie or anything. It, she laid down right next to me and went back to sleep. Um, and I just laid there and looked at her, and I'm just amazed um, by how my life has changed, how that little person has saved my life. Um, saved in many aspects. Um, but yeah, so my story's a little different, but it's good. Well, talk to us about, you, you say, okay, right now there's a perfect example of just, you know, daily life type thing happening that you go, wow, we're not in Kansas anymore. Mm -hmm. Entire new experience, uh, you know, maybe I thought I was prepared, maybe I wasn't prepared, but here's something that, that I just, you know, clung to recognizing I know I'm in a new ball game now. And for you, you know, you just shared that. You know, she crawls into bed with you there. See that? You guys have a moment that happened uh, where you're like, okay, brand new. I don't never walked through this territory before, and now I'm going on a new adventure here. 
Do you have something like that that you could relate? Um, last hour I shared about how um, the doctors took Kendall to the NICU on the first day that she was born. She was not ready to come. They were about four and a half weeks early. Um, and JD was ready to go. He wanted to be out in this brand new world and he just wanted to make his appearance. Um, so he was ready, but little sister was not. So um, on the day that they were born, we had to make the decision, or the, doc the doctor made the decision to um, stick her in the NICU unit, which it wasn't what your experience was, I, I know, because ours was very easy compared to what um, other people's had been. But basically that moment where they took her away um, was really difficult because, I mean, I had two new babies there that I wanted to be with, and if I was a mom to one baby that was in the NICU, I could go be with her all the time. But I was stuck in the hospital room um, with the other baby who was healthy, and you know, so we just, it was just that moment where I really had to trust God and go, okay, you, you're gonna take care of her, that's the best place for her to go, and I need to be here with JD. So I hung out with JD in the hospital room, and Justin went in the NICU ward and hung out with Kendall, and that was kinda our lives for about a week, so. Yeah. Yeah, you called it an aha, aha moment, um, uh -huh. uh, the first service, and that like triggered in my brain. Um, uh, back in, I guess it was the first week of September, um, we had just found out we were having a girl, Belle, um, and um, uh, she had been moving. Um, I, I was able to feel her moving um, uh, and kicking um, for a while, but um, I think something clicked whenever we found out, like, oh, like, now she, you know, she has a name. Um, and I, we were sitting on the couch, and all of a sudden I, I told Brandon, oh my gosh, like, I didn't realize, like, I love her so much. And um, uh, I had, yeah, just shared with him, like, how that had processed so many other thoughts where um, it reminded me, like, she doesn't even know I, I love her yet. Like, she doesn't have the capacity to understand my love for her. And it helped me think about how um, God, whenever, before I followed Jesus, like, I didn't know how much God had loved me. Um, and even now, like, that I've stepped into that love, I still, like, this little moment has shown me so much more um, how big his love is, how grand his love is, and um, yeah, just this new um, view of God that I had no idea about, um, that I thought I knew, you know, what his love looked like, but it's continuing to grow. Well, my experience was a little opposite yeah. from Michelle because uh, uh, Caleb cried incessantly. He had colic, and he just couldn't be comforted, comforted and in the middle of the night in a foreign country, we had only been there a uh, little over nine or ten months and you're all alone and, and he's crying and and it's like oh, what am I gonna do and this thought throw him out the second floor window <laughs> and oh, oh that's just a thought that's a thought just a thought not a thought <laughs> and, from Jesus okay you're gonna capture that thought <laughs> that's all right yeah. and you're gonna just bring that in yep. and it's gonna be okay and then you know I, I, I can't do this I yeah. don't have anything there is inside of me to do this. It's only God. So, and, and that, that's so interesting to think about. So, yeah, you, you, you're thousands of miles away from moms and dads and family members. At, in that time, was there, was there some locals that kind of became family to you, or were you truly just kind of on your own through this experience? Well, I did have a, a fellow missionary wife, and she okay. had already had five children on the field. Okay. And so she, she had some she experience. Just became a, a mentor for me to yeah. kind of get through that that time yeah. that I had. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so those of you who who can or will stand beside these new moms yeah. to to mentor them and to help them through those really tough yeah. times and if you need one I, I have a little bit of experience and I can walk beside you as well because I had a had a friend just help me through through those times. And that's just important, well. just having that friend, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Someone doesn't have all the answers, but just knowing they're there for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, Michelle, you kind of alluded to this, uh, but, you know, I once read, and, and I didn't, you know, believe it before Dax came along. I'm like, okay, file that wherever. But, uh, but a theologian wrote that the best theological book you can ever read about the love of God, the mo most you can ever learn about God's love is through your children. 
And they said, you know, you ever doubt God's love, look at your children, you know, and think about the relationship between you and them. And, uh, and I find that obviously to be incredibly true. Michelle, you alluded to it and talked about that, you know, for the rest of you all. And, and Michelle, if you have some things you want to add in here, go ahead too. But how, how have you uh, experienced, what have you learned about God's character? What have you learned about who God is, about what he wants for you in your life uh, through this process of being a mom? <laughs> diapers change or bath time and all that kind of stuff. So dad doesn't like to do those jobs, so I get I get that lonely job. Um, and all the time when I'm and he doesn't do it because he's not willing to help out. He does it because it hurts his heart too much. Um, he just cannot stand to see them cry. But um, I I'm always telling them and it's just it's silly, I know they don't understand me, but um, it clicked with me one day as I was telling them, I know you don't like this but it's the best thing for you. Mommy and Daddy are always going to do the best thing for you. And, you know, you may not like it, but it's because we love you kind of a thing. And, um, you know, I it just clicked one day that that's kind of how God is with us. And sometimes he's probably just wanting to shake us and say, hey, this is for a reason. It's for your own good. It is the best thing for you. And I'm going to teach you something in this. Um, you know, I had to wait for my husband. I had to wait to be a mom. Um, I, apparently I need to learn patience because God gives me lots of opportunities to learn patience. To practice patience, that's so, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just, just knowing that if I, as a failed human who is not perfect in any way, can do the best things for my children, even though it's hard um, on them, how much more he's going to do the best thing for me. Yeah, um, I would just, um, yeah, add, like, God's love is so big, but um, also he is just so good and worthy to be trusted in any circumstance. So, like, uh, being able to witness what pain and suffering looks like um, uh, through, like, the journey of motherhood, it's God is so gracious and good. And, you know, I think about Jesus weeping with um, with Mary, Mary and, like, over Lazarus, um, and just that's that's our God, and you know he he can be trusted, and the really and, and celebrated with, and the really like easy times it is to celebrate, but he can be trusted in the really hard times too. So what I've learned, I think the most is that every single day, whether they're in the crib or whether they're in ma and their graduate degree, is every day just surrendering them to to the Lord Jesus because. You accept it now. They're going to um, need therapy after you get done with them because <laughs> because you are going to screw them up, and Amen. you are going through motherhood. You realize that you have to work through the baggage from your mother, yeah. just like they're going to have to work through the baggage of their mothers and their fathers, and that we just have to surrender that to Jesus because His love is unconditional, and He accepts us, and His mercy and grace is so abundant and wonderful for us and that we just have have to accept that okay I'm not going to do it perfect mm -hmm. and it's going to be okay and that God has a special plan he's had a special path for them and my job as a mom is just to guide them into that path whatever it is and surrender what I want and put put them in God's hand every day because it's continual to release them and I, I was thinking about this, um, you know, Mary and uh, or J uh, Peter, James, and John, James and John were the sons of thunder, and their mother came to Jesus and asked for, for two spots next to Jesus. And it's like, she was the epitome of the hovering mother. Mm -hmm. and, and so Jesus spoke kindly, but firmly to her about that they will drink of his cup. And so it's like, okay, just release them to his care and he's got this yeah. and I don't yeah. Yeah. I think I've definitely learned humor mm -hmm. um, you know the, the whole 
be careful, you're gonna get back what you gave. I, it does happen, and it comes back like tenfold. <laughs> um, but you know, the most important thing I think I've learned is it's not about, it, it's not about me. God knows what I need in my life and knows when I need it. I had no idea I needed a, a child. I wasn't recognizing the fact that my marriage was not well, um, that I worked way too much. My priorities were completely out of whack. The wrong things were important to me. And now, I, looking back, I can totally see what an awesome and amazing plan God had. Uh, I just I didn't get the memo No clue up front. at the time, at that time, yeah. though. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, talk to me, because you guys, you know, we talked about prayer. We mentioned prayer. You guys mentioned prayer. There's being something that's sustained and something that you lean into. Yeah, what does a what does a mom's prayer look like? What are the things you're praying for your kids for right now at this at this particular time? I said this in first service and everybody laughed, so now I think I'm weird, but it's the truth. Um, I am constantly praying for Frankie's kindergarten teacher. I I guess, I guess it's weird. Um, what would be weird if you show up at her door, his or her door, at 3 in the morning saying, I've been praying for you. I'm going to. That would be weird. But <laughs> I will. <laughs> and I know, because I know that you know next year when we have to do that whole kindergarten thing, I'm probably going to say, I've been praying for you for most of my life. <laughs> and, she will appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, it's very creepy. Um, but then also, you know, her, her future spouse. Yeah. I think that's that's so important, and I know my parents did that, and I landed a really good one, um, you know. So, so I think those two prayers are are a daily, daily thing for me. Um, in our journey, we um, obviously had a long time where we kind of we felt like we were destined to be parents, um, but it just wasn't working. Um, so, a lot of our prayers were basically promises to God that God, if you allow us to be parents, we promise that we will raise our child or children um, to follow you. And when we were in the process of starting this whole uh, journey last summer um, of everything, we just kind of handed over and said, you know, we're gonna we're gonna do our best to make them followers of you and hope that they have that relationship with you, and we're gonna do our best to raise them in a Christian home. And um, we obviously pray for um, the normal things like health and happiness and all that kind of stuff. But we've, we've prayed for spouses and we've prayed for um, things like character traits. I'm so curious what their strengths are going to be. I'm so yeah. curious um, what their character is going to be like. And being a, a fifth grade teacher, I see how children um, – they really do develop their personalities by that time. Um, and you can see the kids who are gonna be like hardworking adults and you, you see the kids that you're like, oh, I'm kinda worried about you. Um, and I just pray that my daughter is a nice girl and that she's nice and compassionate and a good friend. And I pray that JD is a, a gentleman and um, that he will you know, watch his dad and learn how to be a gentleman from his dad. And, um, just all of those things that I just really want their character to be um, reflective of, of God and their hopeful relationship with Him someday. So, um, I uh, <laughs> I shared, and it was a little hard for me to share, but I think I got it this time. Um, <laughs> the first, um, but I didn't realize um, that a song that I sing uh, to Bell, like at first when I had. Um, started singing to her that it would become my prayer, but my, my mom had, um, had always made up a little song that she would sing to me at night, and so I wanted to carry that tradition, so when Belle was born, I was like, you know, just talking to her, and then all of a sudden a song came out, but um, I'm also still not going to sing it this um, <laughs> service, um, but the, the, what I sing to her is, um, you're our, 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 our sweet little Belle, um, you're our little Belle, uh, I love you, your daddy loves you, because you're our little bell. Um, and the heart behind that is I just, uh, I, I and Brandon just want her to know that she's so loved just because she's ours. Um, and that doesn't, like, you know, I struggled for 18 years of my life before I um, started walking with Christ um, to 
um, went to earn love um, and uh, just trying to like take everything from the world and you know be perfect and uh, yeah it was so unsatisfying and I couldn't be that and so I just want her to know that she doesn't have to try to earn that love and that we love her because she's ours and God loves her um, because he created her to know him. I think uh, when they're so young continually to pray for their spouses and their their futures but as they develop the prayers change yeah and their prayers get get whether it's their next exam or where their next performance or their next track meet or their next whatever their 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 scholarship or their their graduation or their uh, internships and those things and my the underneath that prayer has always been that they would see God's hand of provision in their life mm. that God's hand is the one that provides all these things for them and that that they will continually to know that it's him yeah. and we've had our scarcity we've had our maybe more uh, abundant times and through it all that they've known that it's God who has provided and that that is the underlying prayer yeah. that they'll know it's all from him uh, one of the things just kind of from you know we're talking about mother's perspectives I'll share a pastor's perspective in that uh, 10 years ago when we planted Northbridge we felt of the Lord that we were supposed to create a very simple church and we never have been given permission to take a simple church and make it convoluted or complex and so a simple church means you do very specific things and that's all you do and you don't have all these moving parts and these bells and whistles and all these things and uh, because that requires resources, requires people, and also it makes busy people even busier. Well, one of the things that that uh, that I saw when we first started, we, our first wave of babies that came through about three years ago, uh, there was a mother and father that came to me, and we were talking, and they were just panicked because it was first child, and they're sitting there thinking, going, "We we need the church. We need the church to raise our kid because we don't know what to do. We don't know how to teach our." child about Christ and about God and how to how to raise them up and 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 I kind of pushed or I kind of was like oh my oh ooh this this is a new era for us uh do we now have to change our model and you know I started looking at you know different churches around different churches in the country you know so do we have to offer the the three-year-old bell choir for you know children with only one arm you know I was just like you know all these all of these different things that you look and I, I joke, you're like, I can't believe you just said that. But, but I mean, what my point is, is, is there's some youth ministries and children's ministries that are so complex and so, you know, literally there are some places where you could have something every night of the week for your kids. And you're just becoming, as a parent, just driving them to, you know, to whatever the next church function is. And we were like d debating about that, wrestling. And through that process, we came to the, you know, the... The learning and the understanding of you know first generation when when the apostles were sharing to to these people all across the Mediterranean they didn't have complex uh, youth and children's programs to, to raise their kids and yet we saw the gospel go on and parents teaching their children and and we came to the conclusion that that parents have we're going to be a church of champions that the parents are the primary spiritual leader of their home and it's going to be the parents that, that raise their kids to be godly men and women one day. But having said that, as a church, we would be people to help resource, we'd be people to pray, we'd be people that would, uh, that would, that would encourage, we'd be people that would partner with the parents. And so I share that whole introduction there just to make sure we're all on the same page here. And I would just ask you guys, as, as new moms, as experienced moms, as moms of you know, one child, as moms of multiple children, how how can we as a church how can we as your friends as your as your small group folks for small small group people as your pastors as your as your parents as your brothers as your sisters uh, you know what co-workers how can we help you how can we come alongside of you during this season of motherhood season of motherhood for you well what i shared last hour and i i strongly believe it and there's somebody in this room that it means the world to my family because of this. Um, but I was, I was sharing with the, the two ladies that have younger children, what's happening in our church nursery. My daughter's four and a half. Um, she's not just going in there and hanging out and slobbering on wooden pieces of pizza. 
um, you know, there's Allie, who's here right now. She is teaching kids my daughter's age about God. Um, it, and it sticks throughout the week. It is, you know, a weekday afternoon in the car of, I didn't mean to last service, but I actually sang uh, this little light of mine. <laughs> Uh, the way that my daughter does. It's kind of a rap song, uh, but I know that's not how you're teaching it. Maybe it is. Um, <laughs> it might be. And if it is, that's fine. I don't know. Um, but, you know, the the way that that, that nursery and the preschoolers, the, the support that is there, this is such a crucial age um, where it's got to stick. And, yeah, we're doing what we can at home as parents, but to have that that assistance with structure and reinforcement and also as a parent that is able to go in the nursery and volunteer i i learned a lot uh from other parents that are in there you know just saying hey i'm struggling with this area of parenthood um so so i think the nursery setup and the system that we have going is amazing and i think you all will really enjoy it and benefit <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, our, our biggest thing is that um, our small group has been such a help to us. Um, just going through the process of wanting to be parents and then um, after the babies came, they were a huge help. I mean, they set up a meal train for us. They pray for us. Um, you know, they... They understand when we're 20 minutes late to small group and, you know, they're very willing to hold our babies and they've prayed for our babies and um, mm. just to have that connection because they are our second family. Um, we really, really, I don't know if they know this and some of them are in here now, but we really love our small group and don't know what we would do without yeah. you guys. So yeah. um, if you're not in a small group, I suggest you join one because... Um, they really can be a, a huge help to marriage, family, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, there are two things. I shared one thing um, before, but there are two things that come to mind, actually. Um, one is, again, the small group, and within that especially, um, I know it's been um, the best thing for Brandon and I to have people that come around us and um, regularly um, pray for one another, but within that, um, confess sin with one another. Um, uh, because I know, like, even just um, Belle being here um, for four months now, I've, uh, yeah, I've seen how quickly it is for me to want to be perfect um, or, like, appear perfect or, like, think perfect of myself mm -hmm. um, uh, in front of her. And, uh, you know, Brandon and I recently had um, uh, uh, argument, and um, within that I said, like, harsh and nasty things to him in front of Belle, and not only do I need to, like, apologize and confess to him, like, um, you know, uh, the pride that was in my heart, um, uh, so much of me was like, oh, like, I still have time, like, Belle can't understand um, what I'm saying, so I don't need to, like, apologize to her, um, uh, but I do, like, or else, you know, I'm not going to, like, love her well um, all of her life, and, like, that's going to be, I'm, I imagine, harder, even as a teenager, like, her, you know, and, like, me being like, I don't need to apologize to you, uh, but... So just having people that um, regularly confess sin with one another, um, I think is one of the best parts of being at church but, and growing in, in the small group. Um, and then quickly, if I could put on the um, missionary hat, um, uh, I think one of the things that you were sharing and you were sharing, and even Tony earlier, you were sharing about like, you know, we are about um, uh, bringing our, our kids alongside us for the Great Commission and, and um, bringing Christ to others, and I know on the college campus, so many um, so many students respectfully, um, uh, after saying, yes, I want to go um, share, the, share the gospel um, at a foreign land, um, then uh, because they want to respect their parents, um, uh, end up not going because of the parents' fear of for what their happens? safety, which is totally something I'm like in a new place, like, oh gosh. Um, yeah. But just being willing um, to be yet, like, yes um, to our children if, if they want to serve the Lord um, in a risky capacity. 
Um, I think that's something that I would love to be a part of at Northbridge as I, but as Bell takes those steps, hopefully in the future that people would come alongside and say, yes, Bell, with me, you know. A pastor I, I sat under for years once said that, that uh, God owns our children and God takes good care of what he owns. Mm -hmm. Uh, in regards to do I send my kids into a risky mission uh, if they if they sense going there do I do I bless them if their if their path is different than what I planned out and uh, that's stuck with me you know mm -hmm. as I heard that Car Carol what about you what what well, uh, thank you Michelle for being uh, honest and transparent because I think that what we need most is prayer yeah I have I, I I'll give you the names and all their their prayer requests if you want to see me but they <laughs> They all just need our prayers. They're in dark places in their middle schools and in their high schools and their yeah. elementary schools and their, yes. their universities in there. And it's, it's so different than when we were there. Yeah. And they just need our, our divine prayer because, because God is the only one that can light them up to shine in that place. Because the lost are going to hell quick, more quickly than I think in the past. And, and our kids are sent into those dark places. And I think that that our youth directors here, Melissa and Cliff, if I'm gonna give a plug, it's for Melissa and Cliff yeah. because they are doing an amazing, fantastic job yeah. with our youth. Yeah. And they answered the hard questions. They don't shy away from, from anything and they're transparent yeah. and genuine. Yeah. And uh, I just wanna give them a, a shout out. Well, thank you for that. And, and I'll just say to kinda, of, you guys gave the capstones there, the beginning and the end. I'll just say in the middle too, uh, between nursery and youth, I can tell you Kids Zone is an awesome experience and Amanda Graves leads that and and uh, and so there are even though we're not going to be overwhelmed with programming there are tools that we can partner with to help our kids grow in their faith and and this is the 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 caveat I'd say that is the the commonality through them all is you know every one of those from nursery all the way through youth are are completely led by folks that are are if I say the word bivocational, that's that's ridiculous, isn't it, Cliff and Melissa? I mean, they they get a little bit of a stipend, but it's it's very minimal, very minimal. And I can tell you, nursery and children, it's totally volunteer, totally volunteer. And that's one of the reasons we do have the expectation that hey, if you have kids, you're going to be involved in in raising those kids, and you're going to be part of the programming in some way, some capacity, because you have a responsibility as their parents to be a part of their spiritual maturity. Um, so, you know, I just, I say thank you, uh, ladies, for, for just what you bring to the table. Thank you for sharing uh, with us. Uh, you know, an, an, one aspect, one other aspect when it comes to uh, raising our kids that I just want to announce or just let you guys know. This is a perfect time to let you know. So we, we do experiment and play with VBS uh, in the summer times and try to figure out how to best do vacation Bible school or kids camp type experience for our kids. This year, we're doing something very different very different and it's going for it to work it's going to take people to participate in and be a part of and embrace and that is we've decided we're going to do a, based on what you guys are talking about how, how do we bring the family together we're going to do a kids camp experience but it's not going to be a kids camp it's going to be family camp and so vbs is not going to be a time or kids camp is not going to be a time for you to drop your kids off and you got a couple of hours to go do stuff rather the whole family is going to come together and you guys are going to play together. We've got sports games and things coming up where you'll compete with, with other families and have fun together, you know. And then you're going to worship together. And then we're even going to develop the teaching curriculum so the parents and kids are going to not just sit there and just stare at a teacher for 20 minutes, but they're going to process and talk together. And it'll be a chance for you as mom and dad to have some spiritual conversations with your kids and some guided conversations that you could even carry on throughout the rest of the week and to talk about. And so I would challenge you, it's going to be the end of June and the first part of July. It's going to be on Wednesday nights uh, for just a couple of hours. We do three of them, I believe, and just see how that works. So, you know, I, it's going to be for families of all ages. We'd encourage you if you're sitting there going, well, I, my kids are in college. Bring them and you guys are going to have fun, okay? You'll have a great time to be a part of that. I just challenge you to do that. And as we conclude tonight, uh, today, there's a verse that I think describes you guys, and I think it describes the ladies here. And, and it's aspirational. It's something to, to, uh, to aspire towards. It's something to look towards. Here is a target on the map uh, for you to go for. It's, and some of you are very familiar with this passage. Some of you might not be. It's Proverbs 31. 
And I just want to read a portion of this to you as we conclude today. Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? Solomon asks us. He goes on to write and answer this question. She is more precious than rubies. Her husband can trust her and she will greatly enrich his life. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She finds wool and flax and busily spins it. She is like a merchant ship bringing her food from afar. She gets up before the dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plan the day's work for her servant girl. She goes to inspect a field and buys it with her earnings. She plants a vineyard. She is energetic and strong, a hard worker. She makes sure her dealings are profitable. Her lamp burns late into the night. Her hands are busy spinning thread, her fingers twisting fiber. She extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arms to the needy. She has no fear of the winter for her household, for everyone has warm clothes. She makes her own bedspreads. She dresses in fine linen and purple gowns. Her husband is well known in the city gates where he sits with the other civic leaders. She makes belted linen garments and sashes to sell to the merchants. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. So think about that, and, and I would challenge mothers, does this describe you? Because if you would sit back and go, well, no, it doesn't. The beautiful thing about God's grace and God's mercy is it can describe you. It can describe you. We can lean into this. You can find mercy and grace and compassion uh, at the throne of Jesus, and this can be the person who, uh, th this can be you, this can be you. And for many of us today, I, I celebrate you, I bless you, because this does describe you. And, uh, and I just say, uh, mothers, moms of all kinds out there, happy Mother's Day to you. May you feel blessed and encouraged today. Hey, if you appreciate these four ladies, just sharing of their stories, let them know that right now. So as we conclude today, I just remind you what Pastor John's thought was, which is, you know, if you have a baby that pretty soon coming up, we're going to do dedication. And we're going to dedicate uh, not just our babies, but we're going to dedicate our parenting and our families to raising our children for the glory of God. Uh, if you have a baby to dedicate, be sure to uh, let us know that. Or if you graduated from school of any kind, whether it's, uh, you know, high school, all the way up through college, junior college, trade school, whatever the schooling is, if you graduated and you want to celebrate with us on that, we're going to also recognize graduates in a couple of weeks. So we need to know who you are, though, okay? So if you don't tell us, then we can't know. So you can tell us by signing on the card who you are, or if you're boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife or child or mom or dad graduated from something, let us know that so we can celebrate that. And, and so right now, as we uh, prepare to leave, may this passage be what is our, our, our closing here, uh, our liturgy. And may you be clothed with strength and dignity, mothers, and you have no fear of the future. Go in peace. You're dismissed. Have a great day.